What's going on everybody? C4 here. And it's time to do some player grades. And it's a word that we've only had to say one time during the player grades. And that is a Philadelphia Eagles loss 24 to 10 against the Seattle Seahawks. I'm recording this for a second time. Just because I want to... I, I feel like the best way to, to convey how I feel about this game is to get this out in front. No matter what happened, be it the refs, which were... Definitely not in Philadelphia's favor. The Philadelphia lost 24 to 10 against the Seattle Ref Hawks. Seattle, at the end of the day, was better than Philadelphia Day. There is no way that any biased Homer Eagle fan can word this loss into where Philadelphia should have won. There is no way. So congrats to the Seattle Seahawks. It was always going to be an incredibly tough time uh, to go into Seattle and beat them. And it was going to be incredibly tough when it was to go into Seattle and you had to try to beat them. And the refs. It was the 13th man tonight. But I stress that even though I bring up the refs, Seattle was better. Seattle as a team, even without that outside noise, played better. Played Their quarterback played better. Everything for Seattle played better. Congrats on the win. I, I, I don't even mean this to be sarcastic. I kind of hope we play each other in the playoffs. I, I don't know if Seattle's going to make the playoffs. Uh, I mean, Philadelphia pretty much has it locked up. But I really, really... I know some people are like, man, why do you want to say that? You don't want to play Russell. I want to see this. I want to see Seattle come to Philly. And then, then I think that would be a better, maybe not a better gauge, but I, I just think maybe on a you know, more neutral field, uh, the result will be different. But, you know, we will have to wait and see what happens there. It's time to do our grades. I'll do the grades first, get right through them, and then I'll kind of give my synopsis of the game. So first up, Carson Wentz went 29-45. 350 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Got sacked three times. Uh, this was Wentz's worst game of the season. Only kind of good thing that happened was the touchdown drive where he had the amazing best play of the game on either either team was that 50-yard bomb from Wentz to Aguilar, uh, which eventually set up the Wentz to Aguilar touchdown. That was MVP caliber. But outside of that, Wentz had a terrible game. Carson Wentz finished with 348 yards, a touchdown, an interception, and 30 yards rushing. Carson Wentz should have, should have, would have, could have, should have, if he was playing, if this was maybe a home game, I don't know if that was, you know, credit to this 12th man or Carson Wentz, you know, kind of crumbling under pressure a little bit. If this was the, the Carson Wentz that we've seen in weeks past, he wouldn't have missed the throws. He wouldn't have made the mistakes that he would have. Carson Wentz should have finished with literally, well, I'm not going to say the yardage, but he should have had four touchdowns on the day. He finished with one touchdown. He should have had four. He had the fumble on the one that was a touchback. That was, I, I still kind of credit that to the defense. That was more of the defender. I think it was Michael Bennett. I could be wrong on that. Making the play than it was Carson Wentz being like too loose with the football. He definitely could have had a better secure on it, but the defender just had the free shot. But still, that's a missed opportunity. That's an opportunity you need to go your way in a game like this. And he had an overthrow for Nelson Aguilar. Uh, two of them, and he had a wide open Corey Clement that would probably would have been a touchdown. I'm not, I don't know if I want to outright say it. It, it did seem like you know Chris Collinsworth and the like said it was going to be a TD up in the booth, but you know we'll go with that. There should have been four touchdowns for Carson Wentz. He only ended up with one, so I'm giving him a C minus. If he didn't have that play, didn't have that one drive, uh, it'd definitely be in the D grade territory. It was his worst game all year. Still MVP number one. I think it's. Not a, no longer a 1-2-3. I think it's a 1-A, B, and C between Carson Wentz, Tom Brady, and Russell Wilson. But where Wentz has been my front runner and been a lot of people's front runner for the remainder of this, for so far this season, one bad game is not going to knock him off the pedestal considering Brady's had a couple bad games, Russell Wilson's had a couple bad games. None have been better or worse than this game from Wentz. So that's why Wentz still holds in the number one spot. But it's definitely, you know, shortened up a lot. Like I said, I don't even think it's a 1-2-3. I think it's that 1-A, B, and C scenario now. But once yet, C-. minus Run game, uh, JJ, 9 carries, 35 yards. We have 6 carries for 30 yards for Wentz, 2 fumbles. The Garrett Blunt at 8 for 26. Just make JJ the lead back. JJ had some juice where LeGarrette Blunt had one solid 11-yard run, and everything else of that was just one-yard drive killers, one-yard momentum killers. I like Blunt, but he's a... You know, he's a situational back. You bring him in when you're closing out games. He's the guy you put in for the entirety of the second half if we're up like 28-0 or something like that. But in games against Seattle that have a tremendous front seven that you need to hit the holes with some juice, J.J. needs to be your lead back. So again, I continue my little hatred of Philadelphia Eagles running back coach Deuce Daly. Running backs will give a C. They, they, they didn't do a terrible job. Didn't do a great job. 
Uh, look at the wide receivers, Nelson Aguilar, seven catches, 141 yards, and a touchdown, which is good to see considering his worst career game as the Philadelphia Eagles against Seattle last season. Uh, Alshon had four uh, catches for 61 yards. We didn't really target him a whole lot, so credit to Byron Maxwell. Eh. Byron Maxwell, that was bad. Uh, he had an interception, though. I guess I didn't really talk about that Carson Wentz interception because it kind of wasn't garbage time. It was a last-ditch Hail Mary when the game was pretty much out of hand, so I'm not really going to hold him too accountable for that. Um... Uh, Trey Burton came in four catches 42 yards because Zach Ertz had to leave the field for a concussion Hopefully Ertz is back because we need to be at full strength to play the Rams next week uh, But I mean with the receivers, uh, you know, they did their job I didn't really see any blown plays from them any bad drops So I give the receivers a B minus especially for that nice game from Nelson Aguilar uh, Special teams, you know kind of decent. They did a job C plus they do there's no real big special teams mistakes Defense is a big one Michael Kendricks had nine tackles terrible game. Michael Kendricks had a very, very poor game. Um, I, I don't know right, right if I can 100% put all of the blame on him because I don't know if maybe that was Jim Schwartz's play calling. How are you not spying Russell Wilson? How are you trying to rely on Brandon Graham and Vinnie Curry? 200 and what are they, 270 each to run down Russell Wilson when he's scrambling. How are you not spying it? And if you're not spying it, how are you not covering the tight ends? Russell Wilson never, it, it feels like rarely, you might see the occasional big one to Doug Baldwin, but like 85% of his stupid little ballerina fruity swirl things that he does to extend plays, it's going to either running back or wide receiver. And they're always wide open. What are you doing, Michael Kendricks? What are you doing, Nigel Bradham? If you're not spying the quarterback that out of any quarterback in the NFL needs to be spied more, than, you're, you need to cover those guys. And they just look like deers with their headlights on, especially Michael Kendricks, man. Not a good game. Um... Corners didn't play particularly. Ryder McLeod got burnt real bad. Uh, that was not good. Friggin' Jenkins had a really bad game. Malcolm Jenkins made a bunch of mistakes. Uh, Brandon Graham had a sack and a half. Half a sack for Derek Barnett. Pretty, even, for only two players that can say I did my job on defense was Vinnie Curry and Brandon Graham tonight. I think everyone else, I mean, missed plays, man. You can't do that against Russell Wilson. So defense, they're getting a D. They did not show up to play. Um... A, a, a kind of good way to put it for how I feel about the defense is when you go up against the Russell Wilsons, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, you're not going to stop them 10 out of 10 times. Even though the Philadelphia Eagles have been a you know, bona fide top three defense in football, those are still elite playmakers. And you need to stop them 5 out of 10 times, 6 out of 10 times, even 4 out of 10 times. That's what good teams do. Those guys are always going to make spectacular plays, very much like Carson Wentz. Like I said, Carson Wentz is slowly entering that category because that drive where he was able to extend to Nelson Aguilar. Those don't happen to average quarterbacks. Carson Wentz is slowly entering that territory, but he's not there quite yet. And we're Philadelphia. We need those 4-10 to 10 stops. They were not coming. Russell Wilson was torching us. So the defense, they definitely let us down today, man. Um, so the last grade that I'm adding just for today's video is the coach grade. Doug Peterson challenges. Okay, Doug Peterson did not call a good game whatsoever. Didn't, didn't have a terrible game. Did not have anywhere near close. He's definitely in that middle purgatory heading towards a bad game. But he challenges a play where Torrey Smith, eh, close to a first down, probably not. It felt like they're always going to QB sneak with Carson Wentz, whether it be fourth and one, fourth and inches. Challenges that. Doesn't challenge the clearest day forward pass from Russell Wilson to, I don't know who the hell, Thomas Rawls or something like McKissick. That was clearly an illegal forward pass. Clearly. The announcers were bamboozled that the Philadelphia Eagles didn't challenge this. They make that play. They go on to score a touchdown. That really puts the game. I don't even really say it puts the game out of reach, but that is the momentum shift. That play, that drive that they had there, that was right after, uh, I believe, it was the Eagles' touchdown. It was, it, was, it was over after that, man. And you don't challenge that? I need to see the post-game press conference to see what it was. Only reason why you could say you didn't challenge that because the refs were so bad against Philadelphia today. But still, that's inexcusable. The fact that, I mean, Chris Collins, they brought it, they referenced it like three or four times. Oh, how are you not challenging that? You got to challenge. Well, yeah, why weren't you challenging that, Doug Peterson? You got out coached. The moment was too big and you had a bad game. F. F for Doug Peterson, man. That, again, goes to show you why I haven't said one time that Doug Peterson is the coach of you. That's why I have Sean McVay. That's why I have Todd Bowles over Doug Peterson for coach of the year because Peterson. Can't A, call complete games when he needs to, and B, still has rookie mistakes. Like, going for it on some of those fourth downs, take the points. Take the points in a close game. 
In retrospect, taking the points is incredibly tough to justify as a negative. But there were still times that I was like, it just felt in my gut. All right, you go QB snook here. Or, or all right, you take the field goal. It just feels like Doug Peterson still. It was a big problem with him his rookie season. He still has not found that gut instinct that a lot of the great coaches have. So, But more so, that forward pass that could be very much, especially because we had all momentum. That would have been loss of down, we get the ball back. Not a Seattle touchdown. That's after Carson Wentz had that miraculous drive. It could have changed the landscape of the game. Could have, would have, should have. But that was, oh, that's such a forward pass. So, now that I kind of said all that, I kind of laid it on the Eagles a little bit. Like I said with the, the Eagles fifth down, where I say, how, how do you handle being an Eagles fan when we're one of the best teams in football? No one out there. There's going to be people out here, the Cowboys fans, Seahawks fans. Like, oh, the Eagles suck. Look, I told you. Look at this guy. No one is going to rip on the Eagles more than I'm going to rip on the Eagles. As long as you have that mentality... It, you're fine. You're fine because I am. There is not one person out there that's like, oh, I can't wait for C4's crazy video. I'm gonna friggin' lay it. Yeah, I laid my team harder than you ever could, bud. That's what it is. I did him raw, raw dog, no loop. That's what I do when Philadelphia loses in this kind of manner with all these mistakes. So, I guess to end it, the refs sucked. The the refs were every 50-50 call went against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, every time it seemed like there might have been a 50-50 call go against the Seahawks, the flag was picked up. It was it was very very one side. They had one bad call against against the uh, Seahawks, where the, uh, it was basically a face mask from Darby. Versus, I can clear this day. Remember six six fifty every fifty fifty was going to Philly at that point. Um, worst one for sure. Uh, I think it was Bradham got called on pass interference on Jimmy Graham where their feet tangled up. Identical play where freaking Carson Wentz fired at thirty yards downfield. Feet get tangled up between Torrey Smith and I don't know who it was. Maybe Jack Griffin. Flag picked up. That was the summary of the game. There's no Seattle, Seattle Seahawks fan that could say, oh, yeah, that wasn't pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? I can admit the Derby one was bad, but for that one play that went against you, there was at minimum, at minimum, an unbi I had unbiased Eagle uh, fans, football fans on my Twitter that I know aren't Eagle or Seahawks fans saying, oh, my God, man, these refs are brutal against Philly. It's because it's true. It wasn't as bad as the Carolina Panther game. But this was pretty brutal, man. And when you go to Seattle against a team that plays really, really good in December, an incredible home field advantage, if the refs aren't down the middle or even slightly in your favor, you're not going to win the game. There's too much against the Philadelphia Eagles today. Not enough for me to say that the refs are the reason Philadelphia lost. Seattle outplayed them. But the refs sure as hell didn't help. And it, it just goes back to show you, Philly, we need home field advantage. I don't feel any confidence right now if Philly has to go on the road in any of these teams that it's going to get called down the middle. I don't know what these refs have that home teams have to get all the calls, but maybe knowing the hostile environment that Lincoln Financial Field is, they won't uh, be so hesitant to maybe pick up that flag or or call that ticky-tack, you know, holding or anything like that. Um, but the refs, man, the refs were really, really bad in this one. Um, but yeah, man, that's, you know, it's a loss. Seattle outplayed Philly amongst all that other outside noise. And they deserve to win here. Philly, Philly needs to hold that L. We get ready to take on the Rams. That's uh, a big one, man. I mean, if we lose to the Rams, that narrative that Philadelphia can't beat anyone good or hasn't beat anyone good, even though, you know, we did beat the Panthers, who were pretty good, and we beat the Chargers, who are probably going to win the AFC West. But, you know, we got to win against the Rams. That is what I want to see. And at the end of the day, it's better to take this loss right now than take this loss in the first game of the playoffs like the Dallas Cowboys did. You need to take this. You need to live and learn. We have the quarterback that has shown nothing but the fact that he will learn from his mistakes. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. And I'm excited to see what happens against this bounce back game. I think it's the Rams. But that is for another video. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's disappointing, but we'll bounce back. We're still 10-2. We're still tied for first in the NFC. Things are still good. But we need a bounce back against the Rams for sure. So until next time, guys, it's C4. Saying peace. Out.